Um, just to recollect what we were discussing last week, um, Swami was talking about Dhyana Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and he says for all of them, Bhakti and Shraddha are important. And uh, to develop Bhakti or love for God, we should learn about the Lord, His qualities and so on, and what's in the Shastras. And Krishna says that he's going to explain everything to Arjuna. And uh, after knowing what he is going to explain, there's nothing further which needs to be known. I think that's where we were, how to cultivate love, what's the Lord going to teach about the Swabhava and Swarupa and so on. So I will stop here and I think we can continue from where we left off, Saira. Saira. So Dhyana Yoga and Jnana Yoga both are inner disciplines. They are based on Shraddha, faith and Bhakti, devotion. Without these two, they are both unattainable. The pursuit itself is vain. Pursuit itself is vain. A sadhaka deprived of them is as a wooden doll, lifeless, unaware of the goal. The basic requisite to, is a deep-rooted prema towards the Lord. How can you get this? By getting to know the glory, the splendor, the nature and characteristics of the Lord, his swabha, swabhava, swabha, swabha. Swabhava. Swabhava, essential quality, and sarupa, reality. That is why I am now instructing you about these. I am imparting to you fully the wisdom of the sastras, supplemented by the wisdom of inner experience. Know that there is nothing further for you to know. Of the thousands of aspirants, there are few who strive to acquire this jnana wisdom. And of these, only some one single individual achieves success. All who start do not reach the goal. Okay, uh, thank you very much, sister. Um, just a small, um, I think I will ask auntie's help. Uh, the first sentence, which is dhyana yoga and jnana yoga, both inner disciplines the telugu auntie yeah, in telugu what uh, i i read was idhyana yogamu jnana yogamu naku antaranga sadhanam is that right auntie is that what you see i think you may be muted uh, you may have to unmute yeah, sorry sorry uh, yes you are correct idhyana yogamu jnana yogamu naku antaranga sadhanamu Okay. So, so uh, uh, Jnana Yoga and Jnana Yoga both are inner disciplines. So it is written here. But here it says, E Dhyana Yoga mo Jnana Yoga Manuko Antaranga Sadhana. So, just little differences there. And it's, uh, I think it's a reason, it's reasonably significant difference. Uh -huh. I think my understanding, Auntie Swami is saying, Dhyana uh -huh. Yoga is an inner aspect. Aspect. Aspect of Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga. Is this the point? So what Swami is saying, the Jnana is an in, uh, inner pa uh, pa part or inner component of Jnana Yoga uh, is what Swami said. Jnana Yoga is an inner component of Jnana Yoga. 
antaranga sadhana mu is inner component is good enough i think or anything else anti yeah. inner discipline inner discipline i think okay dhyana yoga is the inner discipline of the jnana yoga yeah something okay thank you aunt um so i think that's a slight uh, uh, difference in what the first one says yeah um, and i think swami is also saying in the i think i am imparting to you swami is the talanchini means i have decided is that a, 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 yeah talanchini so i have, I, I have decided to impart to you this knowledge uh, or you know that's what swami has said uh, it's maybe it's it's already stated like that but i thought i just clarify that um so those were some things uh, which i thought i would point out um i will open it up for anyone who would like to comment share anything else i think some of these concepts swami is explaining a little further yeah in, we will in the read the, uh, the next slide if everyone is okay and yeah. then we come back if necessary discuss thank you sir sir one uh, yes. uh, yeah one doubt with regard to that antaranga sadhanam yes. um so while we are saying it is inner discipline so are we saying that for a person who is journeying on jnana marga or jnana yoga the dhyanam part becomes a like inner discipline meaning is it like the undercurrent or are they established in that what how do we essence it so uh, yeah i saw the because sadhana mo i think can also can be considered sadhana in the sense it is also uh, a discipline which we follow so jnana yoga may have certain external characteristics but dhyana yoga is an internal one which is an integral part of jnana yoga is what i understood anyone yes boy it's an integral part it's an integral part of jnana yoga yes so i said so that's what yeah. i understand yeah okay na so uh, integral part meaning so we are in that state of dhyana even as we traverse jnana yes oh, yeah. i think Thank without you. dhyana internally jnana is not uh, cannot exist you know when you say antaranga means uh, without that's the inner motivator or inner uh, uh, something which makes it happen also i think we can understand mm. okay yeah thank you so i think we will read the next slide because the, the swami is con- discussing some of the same concepts uh, um, i'm sorry uncle just one, one other um, point about that the the next line where it says they are based on shraddha and bhakti does the they refer to still both the dhyana and jnana yes uh, swami says these yogas are uh, given value uh, actually that's by the shraddha and bhakti i guess uh, i think that's the sense i got shraddha bhakti purvaka purvakamaina pude ee yoga manaku viluva it is viluva means it attains value it you know it's uh, it becomes well it's it's valueless without shraddha and bhakti both these mm-hmm. both jnana and jnana without bhakti because there are people who you know who propagate uh, you can meditate on a thumb you can meditate on a in a spot on the wall uh, you can meditate on the star you know things like that also there are many theories and uh, people get you know because one achieves quite a bit by just even meditating on something because we focus our energy and we develop mind control we can focus on any activity so these are things which people practice and they can achieve worldly success also 
and generally people are enamored by such techniques that is why swami is i think pointing this out saying uh, if you want to progress spiritually in jnana and uh, dhyana essentially you need to have bhakti without that there is no value means they are valueless ventures without shraddha and bhakti is what i understand uh, because then people use some of these techniques for worldly achievements also uh, i know a couple of people uh, uh, even from prashant liam who who marketed this uh, meditate on the thumb and they, whoever was telling oh we are meditating on the thumb and such people have gone on to become business tycoons of such you know that's all i can say um but swami is saying uh, have shraddha and bhakti uh, so i think that's uh, so they are they are the ones which give it value that's what i understand viluva is swami is the word we have used which is value and then um, put antaranga does does it, um does it mean part because you said something about part inner, that's why i use the word inner component or inner limb you know angam is a component or a part or a limb you know so that's uh, yeah i had used the initially the word inner component andaranga means inner component so it is a it's a discipline which is the inner component of jnana yoga oh, okay okay uh, antaranga sadhanam anyway, that's it so And so just one last question about this slide that the last few sentences where Swami is talking about of thousands of aspirants only a few strive to acquire the jnana and of those only one achieve success and all those who start to not reach the goal. So yeah he is it's a one in 1000 and again in among those 1000 again only a few like that Swami is saying so that means it's a very you know it's it's not competition i think but it is people only one in 1000 are successful mm. i think that's the sense i get um, unless aunty has something to uh, no, no. exactly so is it just to show us that it's a very difficult path yeah. just to say that it's difficult atti prayatinchu veladi sadhakulalo ye okkado nannu ponduchunnadu only one fellow will attain that andaru chenduta ledu all people are not reaching the goal okay okay brother tasan you have yeah. raised your hand brother yes sir ram brother yeah okay. even for me there most of the people don't have uh, the discipline that inner discipline that mean uh, people think jnana yoga and jnana yoga we can achieve the uh 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 achieve the goal but their bhakti is lacking the faith is not faith is little bit of lacking and bhakti is lacking so if they don't have those kind of things they cannot achieve the uh, goal so uh, even when we people say oh swami is my friend swami is my mother but are they really uh, surrendering fully surrender no that is the reason they are failing in their goal that's my understanding brother thank you even here also uh, uh, arjuna also same boat he still not fully surrendered he's listening all the advice still he didn't take the bow to his hand because of lack of faith and his uh, uh, bhakti is not that uh, full thank you brother sairam I remember that. So if it's okay, I can if it's. So, uh, Arjuna, note that there is nothing higher than me in the world. All are strung in me like flowers on a string. The five elements: manas, mind, buddhi, intellect, and ahamkaram, ego. these eight varieties of prakriti nature have produced the stutta shukshma prapancha the growth and the subtle creation subtle in creation 
This is called afar, lower prakriti. There is another prakriti distinct from this that is known as para, super or above prakriti. It is neither stula, gross body, nor shukshma, subtle body. It is chaitanya, consciousness, indwelling in the GV individual. The Jagat world itself is its aspiration. The Lord first created the gross world and then as Jiva, he entered it and rendered it chit by his Chaitanya consciousness. This is declared clearly in the Vedas. You must consider the Apara Prakriti, evanescent and transitory aspect of God. To be the Swabhava, essential quality of Parameshwara, the Supreme Lord, and the Para Prakriti to be his Swarupa. Dwell on the meaning of these Swabhava and Swarupa and grasp it well. The gross is bound by the dictates of Chaitanya, which is Sarva Swatantara, complete master, ever free. Okay, thank you very much, sister. Uh, just to point out the Apara Prakriti and Para Prakriti. And those are the two words which Swami has introduced for us. And he is calling the Apara Prakriti as the Swabhava and Para Prakriti as the Swarupa. And he wants us to grasp it well. And um, actually the first sentence, it doesn't do full justice to the words in Telugu. Yes, correct, correct. Auntie, you please read, Auntie. Pancha Bhutamulu, Mano Buddhi Ahankara Mulana, Yenimi the Vidamalaina, Prakruti Che, Yavat. Auntie, the, the ah. sentence before that, Auntie. Arjuna, note that there is nothing. Archach. Kanu, Kanuka Bhava. Yed, yed. Uh, 86 page, 86, Auntie, I think I have. Ama, Ama. One sentence above this paragraph from the previous paragraph, please read. Okay, okay. Mari e lokamanu. Ah, there. Kanuka bhava. Nakante adhika mainadi. Kanuka bhava. Nakante adhika mainadi. Mari e lokamanu ledu. Dara munandali pusa levele. Aniyu nayande cheri unnavi. Okay, one second. Because it's Mami, Krishna is saying there's nothing greater than in any world. So any other world, not only in this world, a loka mana, whichever world it is, you will not find anything greater than. So you know, when we say world means we may think it's only bhu loka. So Krishna is saying in any loka, you cannot find anything greater than me in any loka. Okay, any higher than me. So that's I thought to point out. Yeah, and instead of flowers, it's pusalu. Pusalu onte. Uh, small beads. Beads. Uh, beads. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's okay. The flowers yeah. are also okay. You know that also. Yes. Tongue in me like pearls or beads on a string. Yeah, it's tongue and one string. Then, Panchabhutamalu mano buddhi ahankara bulanu enimi di vidamala inna prakruti chetane yavattu sukshma jada prapancha mantiyu Nirmita Mainadi. Five elements, Manas, Buddhi, and Ahankara. Here, here uh, the bracket is given ego. Ego is not the proper uh, uh, translation. Ahankara is individuation. Mm -hmm. The splitting of the individual, this thing is, comes there. It's not the ego. As yeah. we think, you know, Mano Buddhi Ahankara, Chitta Ahankara, yeah. we, we think that so. It's not, it's not the pride or ego. Yeah, I think, uh, unfortunately, ego generally is understood as pride by <laughs> most people. Even most in English, English, that is their understanding. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ankara is as understood, individual, individual identification is a limited self. Limited self, yeah. And so, thank you, Auntie. So, I will uh, stop here and I will open it up for discussion. Sorry, can you explain the Ahankaram again and uh, the, the ego? Because I always thought of it as uh, pride too. So sorry, can you explain that again? So the word Ahankara means 
Aham is the sense of I. Everything in this world, everyone in this world right. calls themselves I. Kara means you give it a body, a form. Or you limit that to either a body or either body or the mind. That process, that's where individuation, you, you separate yourself as something which exists separately. From Actually, if you really say I and think of the entire Atman, Paramatman, then there is only I. But Kara means you have made it limited. You are limited to one individual. In, so that's why Auntie used the word individuation. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. So, but you know, that can give rise to pride. That's a secondary process, you know. <laughs> but initially we think I am this body or I am this limited self. This belongs to me. Then from that ahankara, this belongs to me comes, which is mamakara. Okay, so you basically divide everything in this world. You take, oh, this part of the land belongs to me, that part of the land belongs to you. You don't think everything belongs to God. Okay, so all that happened because once you say, I am separate. I am separate. That condition is ahankara. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I think sister... Vasudha, please. I, um, I was just wondering uh, if, if instead of ego, if you say egocentric, egocentric or like it's self-centered, egocentric maybe describes amkaram, it's arrogance that comes no. with being, no? no? What is the arrogance? Arrogance is a kind of pride which over excessive pride is arrogance. Uh, see, it, it, the, unfortunately, in English vocabulary, there's no word. Word, yes, yeah. See, many, many times we are translating some of the Sanatana Dharma thoughts into Indian lang English language, and there's no vocabulary. So you pick and choose what is available. Because such thinking, uh, such understanding has never existed in the, in the language, and the words have not developed to adequately explain some of these concepts. Uh, so that's what I can say. Uh, because people have, scholars, philosophers have struggled. Western philosophers uh, have struggled with these ideas. Uh, that's the reality. And some of these thoughts may have existed in Latin and so on. Uh, Swami says, Socrates, the Plato, and all of them have. Aristotle, they had uh, grasped. But some of this knowledge, some of this thinking did not necessarily get translated into English, uh, which, which is a worldly focused language. Uh, so that, that's what I can say. When we are speaking about Antakarana, Manobuddhi, Chitta, Hankara, there also, Hankara doesn't mean that pride or arrogance. It's there also, it's individuation. Splitting of the individual, uh, this thing say, saying that claiming or identifying oneself with something is uh, here, it is uh, ahankara, I think. It takes a form. Aham takes a form. Am I correct? Yes, auntie. Aham is formless, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> Aham is actually formless, which is God. Actually, Swami says the meditation should be I am I. Uh, you know, but uh, once it takes a form, as Auntie said, it limits itself. It limits itself. Yes, Brother Dasan. Yes, so, Sairam, Brother. The, my understanding, I like to add, I don't know whether they're right or wrong. The first paragraph, the law uh, is to talk about apara and para. Apara, apara is, uh, is come under prakriti. So that is whatever we see whatever we can feel is come under Akara. That which we cannot see is come under para, uh, para. So that means the consciousness is come under uh, Para. And the Prakriti all come under Apara. Apara, Apara. apara, apara. Thank you, Sai Rambal. See, the difference between Apara and Apara is Apara means that which is outside, external, or that yeah. is beyond, beyond. Apara means a lot. Apara Mahima. <laughs> Guru Nata. Apara means a lot. So, Apara and Apara. So, in this case, it's Apara. Para, 
and upper. Uh, para. Tatara means that which is beyond. Upper means that which is not beyond. Mm -hmm. So that means that which is here, that which we see. Okay, so that's the. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So the sense is, uh, yes, the stula sukshma are jada prapancha, Swami says, which are inert. Yeah. They don't have life of its own. Whereas what is life giving is chaitanya. Chaitanya. Um, or chaitanya. And no, chaitanya is para prakriti. Uh, that is para prakriti, which is the karana, most probably. The, that's the cause. Um, Sorry, that sentence was um, these eight have produced the stula, sukshma, jada, prapancha? Hmm. Oh. Yes. Sukshma, jada, prapancha, manta, you need me the mind. Stula, sukshma, jada, prapancha, like that Swami has used. That is called apara prakriti. And the sentence where it says the jagat itself is its aspiration. Okay, so that's... Uh... It's not there, I think. The jagat itself is its aspiration. E jagat tanta yu dhanini darinchi unadi. Asalu... Yeah, so how, how do we, is it supporting auntie or is it uh, bearing it? It's, how how can we say Jagatanta? It's bearing it. B A R bearing it. Bearing it, yeah. Darinchi means wearing also, you see. Bearing, yeah. Apara prakriti jada mainadi, para prakriti chaitanya mainadi. So when it's uh, so it's saying that um, the para prakriti is wearing the apara prakriti, or bearing, or wearing, or both. Bearing, bearing yeah. is bearing. Like be, it's the support. Carrying it, yeah, you know something of that. Support. So aspiration doesn't really fit here, right? No, it, it cannot be the proper aspiration. <laughs> no, Jagat, that is the expression of all this. So, actually, Ashtada Prakriti, they call it, you know, in that eight. Uh, uh, eight varieties of prakritis is called Ashtada Prakriti. Um, when I was reading Dakshinamurti Stotram, in the end, the mm -hmm. same thing, five, all the five elements, instead of mind, buddhi, and hankara, uh, it is written as Surya, Chandri, Chandra, and Manava. That's human being. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, I was just thinking in my mind how to draw this. Manas represents Chandra. Yes. Surya represents buddhi mm. and individuation, individuation represents manava. That's how it is uh, described here, Ashtada Prakriti of, uh, in uh, Dakshinamurti Stotram, the last stanza uh, says that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Swami has directly taken it as uh, manas, buddhi and ankara. And it is uh, Surya Chandra. You know, those are the perceptible things which we are five elements. And yeah. Surya Chandra Manava, we are just able to perceive them. Yes. Yeah. So the line where it says the Lord first created the gross world and then entered it as jiva. So I thought at one point we were talking about how the gross world has always existed. Like, so was, 
was there nothing and then the world was created and then the Lord entered the world as the consciousness? Very, very good question. See, the word Srishti, you translate in English, you will only get creation as the word. Uh, creation is generally understood to be that which came out of nothing. Okay. Um, there is the Sanatana Dharma concept of creation is slightly different. When God created, he actually, the creation is part of him. The raw material is himself. So he fabricated the Jada Prapancha, you can say. Uh, you can, he, you manufactured if you want to put it that way. Okay. So the thing is, uh, there was nothing and uh, suddenly some there was a big bang and you know things like that people say because even even the concept of big bang no one knows what was there before the big bang was it a big mass was it uh, you know gross you know atoms what was big bang no one knows but they know there was a big bang so uh, so i think because they did not have raw material this creation means something which happened out of it. Uh, I think materialization may be a slightly different word because uh, that is a much better word than creation, I would say. That materialize means, see, Swami always says uh, there was uh, uh, radiation, vibration, and then materialization. So the thing is, energy transforms itself into matter which is prapancha, okay? Uh, so that process is a continuous process. It is not that something happened, you know, um, but if you look at the world, I think uh, even a baby is born, even if we just take a baby is born. First, the, the case, home is prepared and then the yeah. chaitanya is given to the baby. Okay, but that is just a process. It is not that Chaitanya came from out of nowhere, nor is it the, it is just a pr production process. You take the raw materials, infuse something, and then put some energy into it, and then it functions. And just like any toy, you know, they prepare the toy and send, and you put the batteries and switch on, it works. And so I think that's a better, that's why I use the word manufacture. So he just puts the raw materials in different forms. Mm. Um, I think, uh, because if you look at it, it is his swabhava. Okay. That means it's him <laughs> who is making it happen. Okay. So I hope that clarifies. Because it is, if his swabhava, as long as he existed, his swabhava must have existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so that is the way it it all was always there means if if creation is God's swabhava, creation should have existed always and it will exist always. This world will exist always. Mm. But when it, you say it, it may not exist the, the form in which we mm, see. Mm, okay. Okay. Sai Ramanti, you wanted to say something, Auntie? No, 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 no. Just I was listening to last last week we saw you, but today you are different. Last week, I was in Oakville. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, auntie, I was telling, each, each day, we, though we see the same person, the swabhava is continuously changing. <laughs> <laughs> the surroundings, the backdrop, everything changed. And I'm also a changed person. Yes. Within eight days, I must have grown a little older. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Brother Dasan, you have seen. So that means, Brother, according to uh, you, whatever God created in the world, you see different, different form, everyone, but I am in there. But you have to uh, cultivate uh, to see everywhere I am there. Thank you, Brother Sairam. Sairam, Brother Sairam. That dress to pravesh to that uh, that does does it uh, apply here? He entered and, and uh, no, 
but i think that's only from a sadhaka perspective because okay. he, i don't think he has to see and uh, he's the one who get around to so i think okay okay i'm sorry i did not maybe pravesh to i took it as yes in, uh, infusing infusing mm. uh, but i think he just it's like the mother the child uh, the mother has created the child then the child mother will say come to me yeah <laughs> then the child has to look for the mother and go and run mm. yes sister vasudha please sai ram uh, my question is the lord created the world and it's a manifestation of lord himself then where did evil come from why are there bad things happening or bad thoughts or bad actions when everything came from such a good source uh how and where did it get contaminated sorry where is it yes. where is the bad somebody stopping uh like all this evil that's happening in the world sometimes is how how is it happening when when the source was so good the world came from god himself how did evil happen how did it come like i think god will say if our if we are looking our looks are bad then we will see the world as bad looks <laughs> so um i think that comes out of ignorance um uh, then you will ask where the ignorance come when god created that also my yeah my and i think so i just some of these points are covered in later chapters also by krishna uh so i will just leave that question um the god is not necessarily all good <laughs> then i think complicated matters but i will just leave it out just because in uh, okay maybe because you asked the question see in this in this world we see something as good or bad because we um we expect something and that does not happen uh, for example um a lion will pounce on a deer and eat it is it a bad thing the lion will say it's a good thing uh the deer will say it's a bad thing because the lion wants to live and it's able to live because it ate the deer deer also wants to live but it cannot live because the lion has eaten it uh, but from the point of view of god he will say oh those atoms have now gone into the lion so nothing has happened nothing you know it has just moved from one place to another place and uh, then what has happened to the atman uh, it has merged into the chaitanya or it will just continue to find another body and move on but the thing is then there is a concept of we felt sad or we felt pain we just don't generally don't complain when we have pleasure so god will say if there is pleasure you will have to explain a pair if there's day there's night that's the way the world is created so in the grand scheme of things god will say there is nothing uh, bad or good but he has set up certain ways i think in this world has to function when that does not function according to the dharma then he will come to fix the problem and that is something the which he will do so whatever in this world we see is actually created by god but swami will say when we are ignorant when agnana that you are not divine and when you think you are identified with the body you would you will feel sad oh my body is dying i don't want to die uh, but we don't do the same thing when our shirt or pant or you know our dress gets old if we throw it away we don't know whether the dress is crying i don't know has the question so um from the from the creator's perspective the body is just a dress and everything undergoes change 
then you will say, why should we, we become good? Yes, I think next question. You know, then questions will come. So I will just stop here. I don't know whether I answered your question, uh, but I thought I will attempt. But I will ask others to comment as well, Saira. Yes, Brother Sai Satish, please go ahead. I was uh, having some points for the earlier discussion, but uh, maybe it fits a bit into this discussion as well. So, uh, like, like what we were discussing earlier, even in science, we say like Newton's third law, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed. So in the, in the context of overall creator and creation, it just looks like that same because they say everything comes from nothing. And it goes back into nothing as well. So even as we speak, thousands of galaxies are being created from that nothing. And when we say nothing, we mean not a thing, which is beyond the perception of our senses. And so we say nothing is there, but that nothing is everything. And in that context, what Anna was saying, as we go from radiation to vibration to materialization, likewise, we are moving from the causal to the subtle to the gross. And even for the discussion that we were having every time, why there is something of bad in this world and so on and so forth, the initial aspect of the Atman is pristine, pure, unsullied, divine, effulgent. But as it picks up, like Swami would say, from the Atman, like Atmana Akasha Sambhuta, like from the Atman came the sky. So sky or ether had only Shabda. But when you go down from sky all the way to the other elements that came and finally to man, more and more attributes got added. And when those attributes got added and the gross got created all the way from the causal, so many shades of that Maya or whatever came up that the perception of what we truly are became something else. So what we perceive is not the reality. What I see with my eyes is actually not real. And what I don't see with my eyes is real. But if I say this loud in, in, in the world as such, they will think that that person is mad. How come? what we are saying as real is what we are seeing as real is actually not real. And what we don't see with our eyes is actually the real. So there is a lot of gap between what is the causal and what is the gross, what is radiation and what is materialization and what is pristine and what we call as good or bad based on our perception. So means there's so much of difference as we go from the, Godhead to what we perceive of the Godhead, that there is a lot of gaps. So just I'm letting you know these points in terms of both what is there and the ongoing discussion. Thank you, Saira. Thank you very much, Sai Satish. Thank you. I think someone else also had raised hand, but I think they've dropped the hand now. <laughs> but anyone who would like to share any thoughts, please go ahead. What about the Rajas Tamas and then Satvik Guna of uh, um, um, person, um, a man? Is it not playing for the good and evil part, which uh, we think that they are bad and they are good, the, our perception, because of these Gunas? A good auntie, very good, very good addition to the discussion. I think we, we all studied uh, Sandhya Nivarani. I think Swami has covered some of that there. Mm. Yes, so uh, and as Aunty says, the qualities, Sattva Rajas Tamas, when they are in imbalance, then there is uh, some lack of order is what I understand. 
because even though the qualities are there, the qualities themselves were actually crea created by the Lord. He has given to the world. But when there is lack of balance, there's an imbalance in Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, then uh, things will look evil and those qualities have to be put in order. If Tamas takes over and Sattva is completely nullified, then there's a problem. And then Sattva has to be re-established. Um, but uh, the reality, if we look back, every avatar came and got rid of little bit of evil. You know, it's like trimming the you know trees, and then they again grow back. You know, that is a tendency of the world. So as Santi said, I think when the Sattva Rajas Tamas are in imbalance, that is when Tamas overtakes or Rajas overtakes then there can be evil as sister uh, pointing, yes. See, that's, uh, I think, as sister Vasudha said, you know, there is... Uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, people think, you know, there are people who say Krishna actually made sure that Arjuna fought. You know, Arjuna for all practical purposes looked as if he himself was acting as if he's a saint. He said, I don't want to fight. You know, it's bad to fight. I want to go away. All that uh, philosophy he spoke. And so for anyone, uh, Arjuna looked like a good person. Krishna told, no, 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 you have to fight. Go to him to fight. There are people uh, who think Krishna was a war monger. <laughs> okay. But uh, though Krishna is teaching Arjuna to fight, saying that you fight for the right reason and people will get killed and people got killed. And Krishna himself was instrumental in making people die. Not because he thought that these were bad people, they should be, you know, completely destroyed. He felt that he has to reset the dharmic balance. Adharma had taken a, an upper hand and he had to put things in order. Um, so, and you know, he stalled even Triguna, which actually later on Swami is covering that also, because that's also covered in Bhagavad Gita. Um, how the, you know, three gunas for and so on. So I would uh, stop there. If anyone else has something to say. The gross body is bound by the dictates of Chaitanya, which is Sarva Satantra, complete master. Here, you know, actually, Swami is saying here, Chaitanya uh -huh. swadi namo. Actually, Ishwara controls the Maya. Ishwara has, power is Maya. That's what it's, uh, it means here. Gross body is bound by the dictates of Chaitanya, which is Sarva Satantra. Chaitanya is Sarva Satantra. Jada is dependent on uh, Jada is dependent on Chaitanya. Swatantra means Swatantra. Swatantra. Independent. Swatantra. Paratantra means depending on something. Um, See, uh, oh, go ahead. You go ahead. No, no. no, no go ahead. There are three things which form even part of even spirituality. Yantra, mantra, and tantra. Okay. <laughs> yantra is the form which, or you know, it's a geometrical shape, you can say. Even the form of a lord is what is called a tant yantra. Okay. Mantra is the power of the uh, mind, which can come out through word, speech. Then tantra is the ritual. Okay, the action, 
of being able to do something. Uh, you know, so Tantra comes there. So Tantra means one who is self-sufficient. He can take care of everything. He is one who is self-sufficient is independent. Paratantra means that person is dependent on somebody to do something. Okay, so self-determination is, uh, you can say, Swatantra. Self-determination. You know, you can do everything by yourself. You are not dependent on anyone for anything or any action. Okay, so that's, uh, please go ahead. You are about to ask something. Um, so, so just in what you just said now, so yantra, mantra, and tantra. So the tantra part refers to ritual, you said? Action, you know, uh, whatever you do, you know, generally. I, I don't know. Um, you, you can use the word machination. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the yantra is the machine. Uh -huh. Tantra is the machination. <laughs> okay. Are you working with the machine, you know? Um, something that so. Sorry, can you say that again? Which is the machine? And... Yantra means machine. <laughs> machine, okay. Okay, Tantra means one who knows how to work the machine. Okay. You know, you when you buy something, they will give you, what is that? Uh, user manual. <laughs> <laughs> You so many will tell, how do you operate? How do you turn it on? How do you turn it off? And they will say, this is the procedure you have to follow. All that, that procedure you, you, which you follow is Yantra. Tantra, sorry, Tantra. Tantra. Uh, okay. It's just doing, you know, if you do uh, uh, puja, you know, that is also, a, it's a form of Tantra. But generally, tantric means they will say, you okay, left, vama, <laughs> vama chara. You know, it's a different <clears throat> left. That's why it's referred. Like Sri, Sri Vidya Puja. Mm. You know, they will have yantra, you know, yantra, meru or whatever. Yantra, and then they chant the mantra, and then with their hands, movements, they do some kind of uh, this thing, you know, that's while well, doing the puja. That's good. Uh, just a side discussion only, you know, but uh, because the <laughs> word came up, so I thought it's good you understand what is the way it is used. So that means a person who is capable of doing everything on them by themselves, capable of doing is Swatantra. Okay. <laughs> so when you say Yantra is the form, like you said, like the form of God, is it right? Yes, yeah. idol. An idol is idol. also... Usually what happens, you know, when you put an idol, Swami himself uh, has materialized yantras in for everything in Parthi. So the yantra, which is a geometric form, which goes under the statue. The statue basically takes that energy of that yantra and puts it in a different dimension. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, you cannot have uh, bhakti and love towards a yantra, you know. You need a form. Mm. Uh, so you, you have a beautiful form, which basically reflects that yantra. Uh, that's the machine, you know. Yantra means all machines are also called yantra. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry. So if the yantra is the machine or like the idol is the machine and then tantra is the ma machination, like it makes the machine work? Exactly. Chanting. So how does that, the, our ritual make God work? Isn't it the yantra always working? Or? See, um, your, your body is a yantra. Mm. Okay. Just because your body is yantra, it will not function healthily. You need to know how to use it. So you, you know, you take bath, you feed it food, you need to know what to feed. All that is actually tantra. Okay. Mantra is, you can say, knowledge or whatever it's from which what comes from the mind or speech. Okay, the thing is, you can ask, why do, why do we need a puja, physical puja? The physical is also needed. Just the way you have to maintain your physical body in a healthy manner so you can pursue whatever you want, the divine energy also has to be maintained. 
So that is why there are physical rituals which are considered important as part of sadhana. That way, if you go back earlier on, Krishna says, I don't like people who do not do Agni, Samskara, you know, something like that, Swami, fire rituals, things like that, who give up fire rituals. So mm -hmm. I mean, this, I don't like because, see, many people think, oh, I'm now I'm beyond. Such people who think that they don't have to do physical rituals, then they should be stopping eating. Eating is also a ritual. Why you have to eat? Because you want to maintain the body. So if physical body has to be maintained, a divine form which is there to help also needs to be maintained. So this is the simple logic. Uh, the thing is, uh, otherwise it becomes a pseudo-philosophy saying, I am beyond all this. But that person, each they won't eat, you know. So you have not gone beyond the body. Uh, so we have to eat means somebody else also has to eat, you know, so things like that. So in sadhana, physical aspects are equally important as mental aspects or as philosophical bhava aspects. So all the levels are equally important. Um, so I hope I answered your question or answered more than your question. I don't know. Yes. So, so that I now I understand, like if we take, like if you think consider the body as a yantra, like you need to do those spiritual disciplines to kind of keep. Uh, exactly. exactly. But for say like a yantra that Swami installed, for, if we don't do those kind of rituals, will the energy dissipate or? Yeah. Will... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we can't have a temple and keep it closed because <clears throat> of Corona. You know, it's, uh, you know, I, because it's a topic, I think we should openly discuss. Because when Corona came, they said, close the center, don't go anywhere. If you believe that Swami is there, we should go. Somebody should light the lamp. Somebody should keep the... Because otherwise, then you have to have rejuvenation time. So the thing is, uh, by even having a center, it is not only individual's benefit, the surrounding benefits. So you energize that uh, place through mantras, even singing bhajans. Uh, you have to do that because that is part of the process. I think the, the where the problem comes is because it is an idol, we think it is an idol. Human beings have to be looked after, but the idol doesn't have to be looked after. It doesn't look, you know, it is not moving and moving its hand and feet. You know, that is the understanding. But for a sadhaka, that is a live thing. It is alive. It, you have to keep water. If you have a shivalinga, they will say continuously you have to pour water every day. Otherwise, it will heat up the home. You know, things like that are there. Because yantra uh, can uh, dissipate, not only dissipate, it can harm also. That is the belief. Uh, that's not only belief, but because the rishis have said, we believe in what the rishis have said. Okay, so there are specific texts, there are agamas specifically for this. Okay, so I hope uh, I will I will stop here. I will ask anyone else who would like to comment to please comment. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. Uh, how does I mean? How does a yantra get uh, all the? qualities and who energizes the yantra? Uh, good question. You know, I, do, I will ask somebody else to give an, you know, say something. I, I, I don't know, there's Sai Satish, there is, uh, there are others. Yes, Sister Vasudha, please go ahead. Um, I don't know, I think when you do Prana Pratishtha, um uh, uh, yeah like you are energizing it by doing prana pratishtha um you do avahayami which is a welcome and then the uh, prana pratishtha but once you've done that you have to give the same reverence as you would it's like god has manifested but in that particular form uh, I have a question as well, which is, is Shiva Lingam also a yantra? 
Okay, good question. Um, I will ask others to, you know, I, have, I, I think I've just hijacked the discussion in a different track, but anyway, I will, I will say, because we are in the middle of the discussion, I will ask anyone else who would like to comment on this. Shivalinga is a pratika of Lord Shiva. As soon as you see the Shivalinga, we remember Shiva. It's only a symbol. Pratika, what we call. So uh, it's as well as as good as seeing Shiva himself. We have that as a um, pra, symbol symbol for Lord Shiva, and we revere we revere and respect that. Uh, Shivalingam as Shiva himself. I think I am. Thank you. It's my opinion. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you. Anyone else would like to comment? Uh, sorry, just <clears throat> adding to that uh, discussion. So we have um, the all pervasive energy everywhere. So even like what Swami would say. So when we have to tune into a particular station, whether it's radio or TV, these days we had like these antennas and things like that. So you would dial into a particular station, even now we do that FM, this whatever FM it is, we then get into that and we tap in that kind of whatever is being played in that kind of thing. So just to put it in similar fashion that when we have a particular geometric design or a shape and like what sister was saying like we do the avahayami then sthapayami pujayami we invoke we establish we do the puja we perform like when they say like shoda show pacharam and whatever like all of that kind of a thing we do for that and end we also take it to a completion where it is done for it's literally like when a guest comes home how we entertain the guest right from the them stepping into the house till the time they are sent as well in this case of course the idols and other yantras or things can continue to stay in the home but in terms of their being tapped into and it's like like how we talk of a bore well. Water is everywhere, but we use a bore well. And from there, the more we use the bore well, the water keeps coming and coming and coming. So it is like every time we tap into that source and we get out of the source. And the more we use, the more we stay connected. So in that kind of having a yantram that captures. So even for any things we in this thing we say like for Ganesha even. Like in Tamil, we say Manjapilayar Purikirda, like in the kind of like take the this thing and we just keep that mountain kind shape. And then we say this is Ganesha and start. So any kind of symbolism or that kind of a geometric shape which we use as a means to connect to that particular deity, establish that deity's presence in that and go forward, kind of connects what Anna was earlier discussing in terms of a yantra and a mantra that goes with the yantra and the tantra that whole for that doing for Ganesha puja or Saraswati puja or Rudra, whatever we want to invoke that energy, which is in its absolute form. So it's like the ocean that is there based on the form that we pray to that ocean with the coolness of the love of the devotee takes the shape or like the iceberg that comes out of that ocean, like that, that form comes out of that ocean and takes, assumes that shape, that feeling of love. And then once it is done, it, it, it dissolves back into that ocean. So it is that formless, which takes the form, which we invoke through a yantra, mantra, tantra, all of it to satisfy the devotee's purpose and then goes back, that iceberg dissolves back into that ocean of being formless. Thank you, Sai Ram. Thank you, Sai Satish. Anyone else would like to comment or share? Actually, whether all of you, any of you realize or not, actually the topic which we're discussing is what already is mentioned by the Lord. Um, I think Auntie Manori asked, who, who gives energy to the young? It is 
the chaitanya from god which actually energizes the gross geometric shape the shivalinga or you know that's three dimensional so shivalinga meru all of them are three dimensional yantras so you know they are geographic in three dimensions there are dimensions of how a linga should be made also you know agamas have prescribed so the thing is uh, as sister vasudha said prana pratishta is our prayer to the lord to come and enter it and energize it so the mantra is the one which brings the chit which is the apara or para prakriti okay. into apara. into that form which we have form which is a stoola form and he enters it and he energizes it in a sukshma way so what happens is the linga or a murti is actually just a shell until we invoke the chit or the divine energy into it using mantra and certain tantra processes and then god enters that because as long as uh, we use the right process and the mantras we can invoke or avahayami and stapayami to establish that divine form into that form so once that happens that is the one which gives it energy and keeps it alive so which is what actually we have discussed krishna says chaitanya the chit enters into jada into jada which is <laughs> statue so yeah. i don't know whether we may have thought we are discussing something else but actually we are discussing yes. what about same thing what your swami is saying so even in a human body when a baby is created first it is only jada Uh, but actually without our knowledge or with our prayer so un, you know some reason god enters you know he puts some chit and the child is born but we don't to pay too much attention we think it is some biological accident through which uh, you know a child is born mm -hmm. um, that's all our depending on our understanding. but according to sanatan dharma understanding the uh, at a particular point i think ninth month or so you know that chit enters the baby and that's when then they have pumsavanam and all that you know all that there are rituals which get done so that it, you know entry of the soul uh, the atman okay. is smooth and so on thank you thank you pumsavanam shrimantam is done in seventh month in seventh month aunty okay yeah nice <laughs> seventh month Hmm. I don't know whether we discussed or over discussed this, uh, but if, if everyone is okay, we can move on. But I hope everyone understood what Swami says: Swarupa and what is Swabhava. Swabhava, para and apara. Swami says we should grasp it very well. Very well, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, just one more question. Um, the first line where it says the Lord created the gross world and then entered as Jiva. So, um, is there any significance to that? So he entered it as jiva, meaning as the jiva atma. Yes, uh, that's my understanding. Um, but auntie, I think in Telugu it says prana. Some prana is also mentioned, no, auntie? Prana, prana is mentioned here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. అందులో ప్రవేశించి జగత్తును జీవుడు తన శక్తి సామర్థ్యములచే ప్రాణాన్ని పట్టి ఉన్నాడు జడము అట్లుగాక పరతంత్ర పై ఉండును దిస్కస్ చేస్తున్నాం జడ ఈస్ డిపెండెంట్ ఆన్ చైతన్య జీవుడునుగా జీవుడనగా ప్రాణధారణము చేసిన వాడు prana da what like, how to translate that anti i don't think it is translated here yeah jeevudaga prana dharanam chesina vadu who pulled the prana or something like that uh, dharana means prana dha hmm when that consciousness identifies itself with the body then it becomes jeeva isn't that that's what we have learned yes 
how to put it here in this way so he identifies with the body meaning wearing the dharanam again the same what you were telling earlier the dharanam wearing it yeah wearing the dress of the self i can say it yeah i don't know sitaram is also there he is silent but uh, if you yeah he can you can also contribute <laughs> I think he left. Yeah, he was here, but he's not anymore. Yeah. Okay. When the when the Lord, when the Chaitanya, when the consciousness identifies with the body, he becomes Jiva. That's what Swami is trying. The Lord created the gross world, and then as Jiva, he entered into entered into it and rendered it chit by his Chaitanya. Like uh, death is the dress of life, so something like when yeah, when the individual wears this dress, I think they take on the jiva form. Once they drop it, they yeah, they go back to the. So every time the movement between causal to gross back to causal. Arun, here yeah. jiva, jiva means the individual, um, individual who who he is called the jiva, isn't that the one who is with the consciousness, the body? Yeah, body. The, yeah, one who is the body with... complex we have. Yes. Uh, body one... mind complex we have. The jiva is when Chaitanya enters into it and it itself identifies itself with this body. Then it's called jiva. Jiva. Jeevi or Jeevatma. Jeeva, Jeevatma. Hmm. Somebody wanted to talk. No, the, I think that was the question from Kalyani. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if everyone is okay, maybe we'll read the slide. Yeah. You, we may not have enough time. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just to clarify that. So the prana dharana means wearing of prana? Wearing of prana. Pranadharana, that's it. So, um, so is it saying that the the jiva enters and that causes the the jada to wear prana? Is that? Yeah, I means jiva is actually carrying prana, okay, or maintaining it, holding it. Okay. Okay. So as long as the jiva is there, prana remains in the body. Um, when the jiva is not there, the jiva is not there, prana does not prana. remain. All those pancha pranas are assumed by this uh, jiva oh, okay. as it enters into it, into the body. So the jiva is wearing the prana, is that right? He's holding on to the prana. Okay. So, so the thing is, so generally we will say somebody dies, they will say the pranam uh, prana pra point. That means prana has left. The pra Before the prana leaves, the jiva should have left. The jiva leaves, then the prana leaves. Mm. And then, and then the lungs are not functioning. See, generally the doctors will check the pulse. Hmm. Uh, the pulse will function as long as prana is inside. And the pulse will not function when the prana e has exited. And prana exits because the person who was holding it has left. Mm -hmm. okay. The person who was holding the prana inside is the GV. Okay, and sorry, one last question on this paragraph. So, um, so, so, what, why is it not that the apara prakriti is the swarupa? Because it, when we think about apara prakriti, there's lots of forms that you can see, and swarupa is like form of the Lord, and then swabhava kind of seems to say something that's not a form, something that's formless, like the essence. But, but, um. 
Swami saying that the apara prakriti is the swabhava. And para prakriti is the swarupa. Right. So I think, I think, uh, let me uh, try see whether I understood your question. Your question is, when you say swarupa, that cannot be seen. Yeah. Okay. But swabhava is seen. <laughs> okay. Right. So generally, uh, somebody's swabhava you can't see, but you can see his form. Right. Okay. Uh, what you see is rupa, not swarupa. Okay, um, that is the problem. So Swarupa should not be confused with Rupa. Rupa is that which is externally seen. But the real form is not, you cannot see. Um, if you but, want- uh, Uncle, why is it called the real form? Like why not the real essence? Like why is it called the real form of God? Okay, so so you, let's see, let's take, uh, uh, moisture. What is the form of the moisture? Can you see? You cannot see. But you can, it can be condensed. You cool it enough, it will become a drop of water. It can even turn into an ice. Ice is something you can see. But that's not the real form the real form is uncrystallized. Okay. So Swarupa is not see, uh, perceivable by the senses. But Rupa is, yes. But then you will say oh, Swabhava is, cannot be seen. But then, so that is a reverse. Okay. I, I, that is the way I understand this. So the real form is formlessness. Uh, but the thing is, we our senses cannot perceive it. So we need a substitute, which is the, you know, we make a, a Shiva in a form. So at least we can worship. But that is why Swami says, go beyond the form. Even though you have the Shiva in a statue form, understand that he is, you know, you know as uh, Sai Sati said, you need the bore well, tube well to bring the water from underneath. Uh, can you see the the form of the water underneath? We can only imagine at best. So Swarupa is that which is beyond the senses. I think your question was once you say the word Rupa, we should be able to see it. Uh, that's why the Swa is there. Okay. Swa can be seen not with your physical eye. Mm. Uh, with the eye of wisdom, you can see. That's what uh, the jnanis will say. Okay, so that's, you need a slightly different eye. Because our eyes are blind to that phenomena. Okay, I hope. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Experiential knowledge of. Yes. Only it can be experienced. Not, we, can, we cannot see it perceive it with our sense organ. Just the way moisture can be also experienced. Yeah, experienced. Mm. Yes, I Satish. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Uh, yeah, Rupam. Yeah, Satish. Yeah, is it fine now, Antik? Is it okay? Uh, but it's better now. Still making some sounds. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to know if rupam in Sanskrit is it synonymous with any other thing beyond form as well? Means other than form, is rupam in Sanskrit has any other meanings? I don't know. What that is. See, the the anti creation is called the na, nama rupa. Form and name. Form and name. Name and form. That complex is the creation. As, so in Sanskrit, the externally manifested rupa is called nama rupa. Um, so, you know, sometimes uh, in some of Swami's discourses, Swami has said, you should go beyond the nama rupa. Okay. 
that means you should go beyond this world creation name and form which some people have translated as you have to go beyond the name of god and beyond the form of god okay but nama roopa complex is this creation uh, i think that's also discussed so roopa i think is only one meaning as far as uh, yeah. come across sai satish which is form form which you see what what avyakta avyakta Un unmanifested avyakta is as non individual individualized vyakta means to the individuation which you are yeah. ahankaram avyakta means which is not which has not uh, manifested it's not manifest which is individual it's that which is not individualized yeah individualized avyakta yeah and now what the asking was rupa form form immediately brings time and space along with it mm -hmm. when you yeah. go to be form time and space drops off so in that context i was just trying to see if it has anything more but yeah thank you yeah rupa actually it's a ro is a fire apa is water <laughs> when both come together then earth in a form escape something like that there is a fire element and the water element which so one thing i just wanted to clarify the swarupa and the rupa and swarupa so rupa is a form swarupa we say that right sometime in tamil also you see the swarupa of a... <laughs> so by experiential side only swarupa is yes that is the way it's right yeah that yeah. oh thank you you will say nija swarupam he this he has shown <laughs> that's uh, you know somebody is real from yeah. so that's a, by, by experience only you can get it just yes. <laughs> <laughs> swarupam but that is not the real swarupa but but that's colloquially that's the way we say because the real swarupa is divinity some will say somebody's real swarupa actually is divinity divine form but we don't go that far in common language you know we'll say we generally yeah. ne negative connotation uh, yes. <laughs> yes but yes that is covered with any enemies so if you take it out then you will see the swarupa as god yes thanks so can we say the swarupa is not visible to the naked eye like in that's what it is right okay that's even beyond the mind okay that's sukshma uh, is be, uh, within the grasp of the mind Sati. the stoola is within the grasp of the senses sukshma is within the grasp of the mind mind the causal is beyond both mind and the senses so that's uh, understand i think it's about 424 yeah i think <laughs> we will just contemplate on the swarupa and swabhava <laughs> and swabhava and we'll go back uh, next week if it's okay there also bhava and swabhava yes bhava and swabhava bhava and swabhava also is there i think that's why the question from kalyani was so bhava is actually you can't see somebody's feeling but then how swabhava is thula and sukshma means we can see so how is it so that that's why i said it's a reverse so bhava can be seen but bhava can't be seen <laughs> god yeah that is <laughs> so much so much is packed into this words yes okay so we will cross the i think okay. we we'll continue the discussion next yeah we can we'll cross with samasta loka shaira om om samasta loka sukhino bhavantu समस्तलोका सुखिनो भवन्तु
समस्तलोका सुखिनो भवन्तु ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम साई राम साई राम साई राम जय साई राम